Several weeks back at the New Jersey e-bike show, I met DYU team. They showcased their new e-bike lineup and I got a chance to check out the new two models that really caught my attention. The V8 that looks awesome, great specs, and the original style design, urban commuter, and the FF500 model. Today, we'll be looking closely at the FF500 electric bike model. This e-bike is priced at only $10.99. A very attractive price level and at the first look this model is quite exciting and interesting. Just from design perspective, the frame shape, the foldability option, the locking mechanism structure and this blue color, it's extremely attractive and appealing. I've seen so many comments in the last three months on the channel, people asking to review the Aventon Cinch and praising that model so much. People really liked it, the specs, the design and how it performs. Well, this DYU e-bike is the same frame design. I have not had a chance to test Aventon Cinch e-bike, but from looking at the website on both sides, Aventon is $400 more expensive and DYU model has features that Aventon does not have. Let's go over the unboxing and test ride this e-bike and see how it performs and go over the pros and cons and see if this e-bike is worth your attention and potentially place it on your buy list since summer it's right around the corner. Assembly took under 5 minutes, only had to unpack it and install the front wheel, the brakes and everything else was set up out of the box. We have a 500 watts rear hub motor, the battery is 48 volts, 14 amp hour capacity and the pack despite being constructed out of 18650 cells, it's very compact and can be charged outside of the frame. Speed. The bike is set up with 3 speed levels, maximum top speed being 20 miles an hour and it's limited. It does not matter how hard you pedal, you'll reach 21, 22 miles an hour by that level and kicking in and reducing speed back to 19, 20 miles an hour. Acceleration and torque. The cadence sensor is set up to kick after a full pedal rotation and it's butter smooth. Pressing the throttle from dead stop will engage the bike immediately, give you a very strong torque and fast acceleration, gradually growing and reaching 20 miles an hour really quick. This e-bike is set up to accelerate really fast, but once you hit 20 miles an hour, it kind of kills the fun. It's, you know, it's limiting and stopping, but still at that level, it stays consistently. It doesn't drop. It doesn't, you know, peak and go up and down like other bikes. So it feels really fun to ride it. All right, guys, so I have a backpack on me and it's about 70 pounds, big design, 45 liters. It's pretty heavy, but still comfortable. And here's a hill. Central Park and let's see how this bike does. I did not edit this part and bear with the awful sound but I wanted you to see how this bike performs in real time and I need to emphasize my weight is here. Now 15 miles an hour, 230 pounds, an additional 70 pound backpack totaling 300 pounds and this e-bike gradually gains speeds on this hill not struggling and it's only 500 watt rear hub motor. miles now and slowly gradually climbing 17 and now 18 is a little higher so the frame, no rattle, nothing shaking, solid, rated 330 pounds. Initially at the first ride I was feeling sitting over the handlebars, weird, uncomfortable pedaling position, but moving the seat back 1 to 2 inches changed everything. Ergonomics are now comfortable, the seat post suspension and this inflatable cover makes the ride so comfortable and give you that extra adjustability. Range. I was able to cover 27.8 miles in a third speed setting with speeds between 13-14 miles an hour all the way to 20 miles an hour. It was a bit warmer today, around 50 degrees and my weight when testing around 230 pounds. The handlebars 23 inches in width, we have this nice grips, I like how it sticks to your hand even without gloves, this pattern is very comfortable, we have hardware to secure it, very compact console, up and down buttons and we have here Zero, regular, uh, you know, bike with no pedal assist, uh, first speed, second and third. And um, first is uh, 10 miles, second I think 12, 13 and the third all the way to 20 miles an hour and it's limited. Uh, I covered so far 14 miles, uh, I like the range, I'm still testing the range. Uh, here we have 
regular, you know, bell, but it's touching here, you know, next to the brake and the Peak Design mount that I use. Mechanical disc brakes, nothing fancy, you know, standard stuff. M5 screen that you've seen in other bikes. We have uh, SIS Index uh, Shimano, 7-speed shifter, standard stuff, and we have throttle. Cabling the same way pretty much uh, as other bikes uh, sticking out, but uh, I think it's much nicer organized here uh, Much more minimalistic and thinner. We have a light in the front decent power Nothing crazy, but does the job. We have uh, the same standard uh, for that you see on other bikes But here it's much softer and we have almost three inch of travel uh, Very comfortable guys. There are no free passes on this channel when it comes to reviews and on this model good overall quality But as cons, I would like to ask DYU team to add add a rear active brake light which is crucial for city commuting as an option on a website for a longer seat post for taller riders also an option to choose a bigger front chain ring here we have adjustability so you can unlock that and uh, adjust it this is the limit probably about four inches adjustability I lift it a little bit higher and it works uh, perfectly for me and this set uh, really nice I did a review I think last year on those uh, air uh, covers this is actually integrated into the seat and you have here valve release uh, air and you have a pump here so this is how it works you can actually hopefully you guys can hear this you can pump air and fill this with air and uh, adjust the comfort and softness and response uh, as you like and we have here a shock the same shock as you see in other bikes, uh, nothing fancy, just regular stuff, but uh, it works. Uh, sometimes it gets a little bit stuck in the bottom, but then it comes back. So uh, all this together with the front fork, this is the most comfortable, you know, folder I tried so far. Really impressive. Uh, the only thing is um, I wish uh, the YU uh, adjusts and uh, offers this option. I need a longer uh, seat post. Uh, I feel like... If I had more length, I would have, uh, I would uh, lift it higher. We have turn and shifter. The drive, it's only 46 uh, tooth. Uh, I would uh, like to have option for 52, so you can push more and uh, get this bike going faster. Um, controller here, it's limited 20 miles an hour, and I like the acceleration. It's very torquey, very powerful, fun ride until you hit 20. Even at 20 miles an hour, it feels comfortable and it still keeps that uh, uh, top speed uh, and accelerates. It doesn't, you know, uh, deep down and then picks up like other bikes. So it feels very fun to ride and very comfortable and very engaging. I took the C-Bike to Central Park and it was a pleasant off-road ride. Hold speed steady, off-road and triple point suspension makes a big difference compared to other folders I tested. I took the C-Bike traveling this week and it was super easy to load it into the bus. Taking this e-bike for a weekend car getaway, it's so simple. The e-bike weighs 67 pounds only, and removing the battery makes it so much easier to move it around. It is a well-priced package and performance, great for fun riding or commuting. As the micro-mobility market continues to expand, companies are looking for ways to stand out and boost their bottom line. DYU brand strategy and a new upcoming models in e-bike development at lower prices creates a superior new user experience that should attract and retain more new customers. I like the seat bike and what it has to offer for this price point. Guys, I hope this review was able to bring you a new, more affordable e-bike folding option. If it did, smash that like button and share this video. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.